One thing people don't realize is it's actually pretty easy to propagate a lot of shrubs and even trees for the homeowner. You don't have to be a professional. I'm here in Grow Wild's greenhouse, but and it's nice to have a greenhouse, but you can do this at home. You don't have to have this kind of setting. I'm going to show you how. What I've got here are cuttings of a shrub called Aronia. It's a very beautiful shrub. It blooms in the spring, has fabulous fall foliage, berries that uh, birds just love. It's a great replacement for burning bush, by the way, which is an invasive and a lot of people don't recommend planting anymore. You can see that I've used sharp shears to cut these with, and I just went out and did this before we're filming this, so you can see that you need very fresh, fresh cuttings. Cut very sharp and I put them in a grocery bag. That's all I do, is just, just to keep them fresh inside of plastic, which protects them. And if I had to wait a little while, I would just take my mister and just mist them like that to keep them fresh and crisp. You don't want them to suffer at all between the time that you cut them and the time that you stick them, as it's called. To prepare your cutting and stick it, you first cut off all of the bottom leaves, every leaf except the last one at the top, and you cut that at an angle. The reason for doing that is you don't want too much leaves here for the plant to support. After all, it doesn't have any roots anymore, so how can it keep all those leaves alive? It's a tremendous drain on the plant to try to do that. Plus, where the leaves, leaves were are where the roots will come out. So you don't want leaves rotting in the soil. You want to clean that all off. Just leave a little bit of leafage at the top so it can keep photosynthesizing while it's making roots. You'll notice that I've cut these when this wood is bends easily but, and does not break, but it's not brand new growth. This is called half hard, and this is a good state at which to cut, make cuttings of most deciduous shrubs. Those are the ones that drop their leaves in the winter. Um, if you're thinking about doing evergreen shrubs, usually the time is in the winter, hollies, for example. But for most of the shrubs that we grow, this is the state at which you want to cut it. You'll see I've cut several leaves. These are called nodes, and I want those nodes where, where the roots are going to come out. That's what I want underground. Rooting hormone. This encourages those roots to come out and form quickly. There are two types. There's liquid and a talc-based. Rutone is one, hormodin's another. I'm using talc-based today. This would work just as well. This is an alcohol-based one, the liquid, but this is easy to show you. Notice I'm not doing it in the container because that would contaminate it. I put this in a little Pyrex cup and I'm just coating those nodes, tapping off the excess, and you can see the rooting powder, that's all you need, on there. Now I'm going to make a hole with, the British call it a dibble and they invent special tools to do this. I use whatever's available, at this point a sharpie. I poke a hole in the cell. I put this down in there so the nodes are below ground, firm the soil around it, and it's ready to go. I want to talk about what it is that we're putting these cuttings in, what medium we're using. This is not just regular soil or potting soil. This is, I prepared this beforehand. It's a mixture of peat, the kind you buy in bales, and perlite, which is this white stuff. And perlite looks like styrofoam, but it's not. It is actually a volcanic mineral that's expanded by heat. You can tell, see how it crushes under pressure. It's completely sterile, has no pH value, and it allows air and good drainage around the cutting so the cutting won't rot. It's a terrific thing for hardwood cuttings. Peat is also sterile, so this way I don't have to worry about any fungal organisms or anything in this soil. So just get yourself, you can see I'm reusing a flat that I've used before. Recycling is always a good thing. Once I've stuck this whole flat, I will mist it. And you can either buy mist nozzles, most garden centers have this sort of thing, a mist nozzle to mist the whole thing, put this on the end of your hose, or you can just use the mister like this. I pre-moistened this, of course, so it's already damp before I stuck the cuttings, and then I will just mist the whole thing, and it's ready to go. You'd put this in a non-sunny place, in the shade if you're doing it outside, if you've got a, a lath area or a shaded porch, that's even better. Just keep it damp but not soggy, mist it a couple of times a day, this time of year, which is late spring into early summer, which is the great time to do this, uh, they can strike roots in three to four weeks, no lie. And you can pot these on in late summer, 
or just leave them in the flat to really root out well, protect them over the winter and plant them out in the spring. Some of the shrubs that, you, that are easy to propagate in this way are hydrangeas, both say Annabelle's and oak leaf hydrangeas of various sorts, mock orange for that wonderful fragrance, wisteria vines, very easy, various kinds of spirea, which are always popular, nine bark, which is a terrific plant, physocarpus is the botanical name, clethra, very fragrant, Father Gilla blooms very early, great fall color, very popular, increasingly popular plant, it's a native, and all kinds of viburnums, which really are easy to reproduce in this manner. You can do all different kinds of shrubs. It's a wonderful way to increase your own uh, landscape at a minimal cost with what you've already got.